In this video, I cover the energy systems involved in badminton. But before I get into it, let's take a look at the variables that affect performance, which I'll cover in separate videos. So we have technique, footwork, mental strength, tactical knowledge, and physical ability. This video looks specifically at physical variables affecting performance. So the physical is divided into central and peripheral components. The central component comprises of the heart, lungs, and brain, and the peripheral comprises of the musculoskeletal system, the vascular system, and the peripheral nervous system. This video zeroes in on the link between the heart and lungs and the musculoskeletal and vascular systems. What I'm about to discuss affects the kinds of food you eat, such as the balance between carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. It also affects the mode of exercise you engage in for being badminton fit. And it also determines all the details involving training, including sleep, water intake, supplements, and vitamins, all of which contribute to determining success. The body's battery comes in the form of a molecule called ATP. This is short for adenosine triphosphate, which is one adenosine molecule bound to three phosphate molecules. Through various biochemical reactions, one phosphate molecule is cleaved off the main ATP unit, which releases energy, which is then used for work. The body uses three different energy systems to produce, break down, and use ATP in order to do work. The first one is the ATP-PC system. It doesn't require oxygen, and it doesn't produce lactate, and both ATP and phosphocreatine are stored directly in the muscle cells. This system is used within the first 0 to 10 seconds of intense activity. The second system is called the glycolytic system. It also doesn't require oxygen, but it does, however, produce lactate. It produces ATP through the breakdown of simple carbohydrates like fructose and lactose, and it kicks in after about 10 seconds of intense activity and lasts up to 2 minutes during maximal exertion. The third system is called the oxidative system. It does require oxygen to function, but it does not produce lactate. It gets its fuel from complex carbohydrates and fats and will last indefinitely as long as the body has enough fuel. In the ATP-PC or phosphagen system, you have both ATP and phosphocreatine in the muscle. After a phosphate breaks off to give energy, it now becomes ADP with an inorganic phosphate byproduct. The phosphocreatine stores rebuild ATP so that work can continue. This will only last for a few seconds until phosphocreatine is depleted. Only full recovery for over a minute will replenish ATP and phosphocreatine stores so that the same intensity work can be repeated. The moral of the story is that you can't smash or move around the court at full intensity indefinitely. The main takeaway of this video is that you have to pick your moments to push at 100% and you must focus on training the other two energy systems. Now let's look at the more complicated glycolytic system. The glycolytic system, or anaerobic glycolysis, makes and uses ATP through the breakdown of simple carbohydrates and muscle glycogen. ATP is then broken down into a molecule called pyruvate. If the intensity of the match is low and you are able to take in enough oxygen, pyruvate will be transported into Krebs citric acid cycle which is part of the oxidative system. If however the match is intense and it's difficult to get in enough oxygen, pyruvate will bind to hydrogen ions which is also a byproduct of intense exercise. This new molecule is now called lactate. Lactate is shuttled back to the beginning of the cycle to help produce more ATP. So in effect, lactate is a good thing. So what does cause the muscle to malfunction at ultra high intensity? Just watch. Hydrogen ions accumulate faster than they can be converted to lactate and shuttled back to the beginning of the cycle. This lowers blood pH and causes intracellular acidosis. So when the intensity of the match is too high, anaerobic glycolysis can't continue and consequently the muscle malfunctions. Only adequate rest and oxygen will solve the issue, but this is impossible in the middle of the match. So in summary, lactate is a good thing because it rebuilds ATP. Muscle function is inhibited by an increase in hydrogen ions, which causes intracellular acidosis, and only rest and oxygen will clear hydrogen ions. The final system we need to look at is the oxidative phosphorylation system. This system relies on complex carbohydrates and fats to produce and use ATP. Remember at the beginning that we said that when the match intensity is low and you're getting adequate oxygen, the pyruvate produced from the breakdown of ATP is shuttled into Krebs citric acid cycle, which is part of the oxidative system, which occurs in the heart of the mitochondria. This produces two molecules, NADH and FADH2, which resynthesize ATP. 
So the intensity of the match has to be very low for this system to be the sole energy producer, and most good matches are not low intensity. So the oxidative phosphorylation system is used from the beginning to the end of the match. It can resynthesize ATP indefinitely as long as it has oxygen and fuel, and consequently it is improved by training the glycolytic system as it increases aerobic power. So let's summarize. We have the ATP-PC or phosphogen system, we have the glycolytic or anaerobic glycolysis system, and finally we have the oxidative phosphorylation system. ATP and PC are stored in the muscle, provides immediate energy, it doesn't require oxygen, it doesn't produce lactate, it's used during maximal intensity work. The work to rest ratio is 1 to 10. Do two court sprint bursts or six corner fast footwork. Rest to recover fully and do two to three sets. The glycolytic system uses simple carbohydrates and stored muscle glycogen. It doesn't require oxygen. It produces lactate which resynthesizes ATP. An increase in hydrogen ions causes muscle fatigue training lactate threshold improves tolerance to the hydrogen and increases the buffering enzymes to manage hydrogen. High intensity interval training or HIT training which is a hundred percent effort with a two to one work to rest ratio. So work for 20 to 30 seconds followed by 10 to 15 seconds of rest. Repeat this as many times until you can't go on. Log your number of sets and try to improve on this every three to four weeks. Running and cycling are good as is footwork. Do this twice a week, building up slowly. The oxidative system uses complex carbohydrates and fats. It requires oxygen and it doesn't produce lactate. It's low to medium intensity and can last indefinitely as long as there is fuel and oxygen. Do a 45 minute to one hour run once a week at medium intensity. Here's a graph that summarizes all three energy systems and their usage over time. The blue line is the ATP PC system, the red is the glycolytic system, and the green is the oxidative system. Remember, knowledge is power and power leads to success. If you like this video and you want to learn more, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.